the title of the book is Henry and the Elephant, a Thomas the Tank Engine storybook based on the railway series by the Reverend W. Audrey with pictures by Owen Bell. When the director of the railway, Sir Topham Hatt, gave Thomas the Tank Engine his very own set of coaches, he also gave Thomas a line of his own. Henry the Green Engine and Gordon the Big Blue Express Engine were lonely when Thomas left the yard to run his branch line. They missed him very much. And now they had more work to do. They couldn't wait in the shed till it was time to go and then expect to find their coaches waiting at the platform. Henry and Gordon had to fetch their coaches themselves. And they didn't like that. Edward the kind blue engine sometimes did odd jobs. And so did James the proud red engine. But James soon started grumbling too. Sir Topham Hatt gave Henry and Gordon new coats of paint to cheer them up. But they still grumbled about the extra work. We get no rest, we get no rest, they complained as they clanked around the yard. But the coaches only laughed and called Henry and Gordon lazy. But one day, a circus came to town. The animals rode in special freight cars and performers rode in special coaches. All the engines wanted to push and pull the circus freight cars and coaches into place. When the circus was ready to go on to the next town, Sir Topham told James to pull the train. That made the other engines dreadfully jealous. However, they soon forgot about the circus as they had plenty of work to do. One morning, Henry was told to take some workmen to a tunnel that was blocked. He grumbled away to find two freight cars to carry the workmen and their tools. Pushing freight cars! Pushing freight cars! He muttered in a sulky sort of way. They stopped outside the tunnel and tried to look through it, but it was quite dark. No daylight shone from the other end. The workmen took their tools and went inside. Suddenly, with a shout, they all ran out, looking frightened. We went up to the thing that was blocking the tunnel and started to dig. But it grunted and moved, they said. Nonsense, said the foreman. It's not nonsense, said the workers. It's big and alive, and we're not going in there again. Well, said the foreman, I'll send the freight cars into the tunnel and Henry can push the obstacle out. Whoosh! said Henry unhappily. He hated tunnels, but this was worse. Something big and alive was inside. Beep, 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 he whistled. I don't want to go in. Neither do I, said his driver. But we must clear the line. Oh dear, 
Oh dear, puffed Henry as they slowly moved into the darkness. Bop. Henry's driver shut off the steam at once. Help! Help! We're moving backward! wailed Henry. Then, moving slowly out into the daylight, came Henry. And then the freight cars. And last of all, pushing hard and looking rather cross, came a large elephant. What do you know? said the foreman. It must be an elephant from the circus. Henry's driver put on his brakes and someone ran to telephone for the animal keeper. The elephant stopped pushing and came toward Henry and the workers. They gave him some sandwiches and cake. So he forgot he was cross and remembered he was hungry. The elephant drank three buckets of water without stopping and was just going to drink another when Henry let off steam. The elephant jumped with a whoosh. He squirted the water over Henry by mistake. Poor Henry. When the animal keeper came, the workmen rode home, happily in their freight cars, laughing at their adventure. But Henry was very upset. An elephant pushed me! An elephant whooshed me, he hissed. Once he was back in the shed, he told Gordon and James about the elephant. And I am sorry to say that instead of laughing and telling Henry not to be silly, Gordon and James looked sad and said, you poor engine, you had a bad day. The title of the book is Mercer Mare's Little Monster at school. Early in the morning, mom wakes me and says, get up little monster. It's time for school. I put on my overalls and go downstairs to breakfast. Pop says, what will you have this morning? After breakfast, I brush my teeth and get ready to go. I have lots of school stuff to carry with me. Mom walks me to school. Some of my friends come on a bus. The first thing we do is sing a morning song and then we practice our letters. Yali makes some of his letters backwards and then he gets mad. But I help him. Counting comes next. Little Laugh is the best counter in the class and that makes Yowie mad too. 
Yali wants to be the best counter in the class. We have pets to take care of. I have a zipper rumpa zoo. Little Lap has a gerbil. Grandella has a snake. Yali won't take care of a pet. He says they're icky. We grow plants. Everything is growing something different. I'm growing some beans in a box. Yali's plant won't grow. He says the plant is mad at him. We tell what we did over the weekend. Yali makes up the most fantastic stories. On nice days, lunchtime is outside. I have a sandwich and a tango, but Yali always brings lots of candy. At recess, we all go to the playground. Yali won't play with anyone. He says games are stupid. After recess, Mr. Grithix reads us the story of Little Monster and the Three People. Everyone sits on a mat and listens except Yali, who pouts. He wants to hear a story about horrible people from outer space. Mr. Grithix gets out a map and shows us where our town is. We see how the monsters dress in different countries and look at flags from different monster lands. We have science class and learn all about leaves and rocks and bugs. Then we get to make things. I make a paper airplane. Little Laugh makes a block building and Grandella makes a puppet. Yali draws a great picture and everyone is amazed, especially Yali. Grandella says to Yali, Yali, you're the best drawing in school. And Yali smiles. Then we have singing. Miss Vera Kisser plays the piano. Yali and I share a songbook. And Yali even sings. School is over. I walk home with my older sister and my new friend Yali. I put Yali's great drawings on my refrigerator, right next to my great drawings. of the book is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. The author and illustrator is Lorinda Brian Cawley. Once upon a time in a cozy house in the middle of the woods, there lived three bears. One was a great big father bear with a thick shaggy coat, large paws, and a deep gruff voice. The next was a mother bear with a soft fur coat, a middle-sized body, and a gentle low voice. The third was a little baby bear with tiny furry paws 
and a funny small voice someplace between a whine and a squeak. One day, after the bears had made their morning porridge and poured it into their bowls, they decided to take a walk in the woods while their porridge was cooling. They didn't want to burn their mouths by eating it too soon. Now, there lived near the edge of the woods a little girl named Goldilocks. She was called Goldilocks because her hair was light and shiny gold. That morning, her mother sent her to pick flowers to keep her out of mischief. But Goldilocks got tired of picking flowers and she ran off into the woods to chase bees and pull down the branches off the wild rose trees. Before long, Goldilocks found herself in a clear. Ahead of her, she saw a pretty little house. Finding the door open, she peeked in and seeing nobody. She made up her mind to go boldly in and look around. A delicious cinnamon smell was coming from the kitchen. On the table, Goldilocks found three bowls of oat porridge. Goldilocks was always as hungry as she was full of mischief. So she decided to taste the porridge. First, she took a spoonful from the great big bowl, but it was too hot and it burned her mouth. Next, she took a spoonful from the middle sized bowl, but it was too cold. Then, she took a spoonful from the wee little bowl, and it was just right. She took one bite, then another, and another, and soon she had eaten up every bit. Goldilocks looked around for a comfortable chair to rest in. She was feeling tired from all her running through the woods, and she was full of the delicious porridge. First, she sat in the great big oak chair, but it was much too hard. Next, she sat in the middle sized chair with the velvet cushion, but it was too soft. And then she tried the little vicar chair, and it was just right. And she rocked, and she rocked, until the bottom fell out. And down she came, bang, on the floor. Now Goldilocks spied a flight of stairs and she began to wonder what was upstairs. So up she climbed until she found herself in a pretty bedroom with three beds, side by side. Seeing the beds made her feel sleepy, so she decided to lie down and take a short nap. First. She climbed up into the great big bed, but it was too hot, and the pillow was much too big. Next, she lay down in the middle-sized bed, but it was too soft. She sank down so deep into the quilts that she had a hard time getting out again. Then she tried the little wee bed, and it was just right. 
she snuggled down under the cozy quilt and fell fast asleep. By this time, the three bears were tired and hungry. They weren't sure their porridge would be ready to eat, so they went home for breakfast. When Papa Bear saw the spoon left in his bowl, he roared out in his great gruff voice, Someone has been eating my porridge! Then Mama Bear looked over at her bowl, and she saw that it had been moved. So she threw up her paws and cried out, Someone has been eating my porridge too! Baby Bear ran over to his porridge and saw the empty bowl. He squeaked, Someone has been eating my porridge too, and they ate it all up, and there's none left for me! Now the three bears went sure that someone had been in their house, and they began to look all around the room. Before long, Papa Bear noticed that his chair was not as he had left it, and he growled, Someone has been sitting in my chair! Mama Bear went to her chair and saw a hollow in the middle of the cushion where Goldilocks had sat. She scowled and said, Someone has been sitting in my chair. Baby Bear ran over to his chair and saw that it was broken. He wailed in his squeaky little voice, Someone has been sitting in my chair and it's broken all the pieces now my chair is everywhere. Papa Bear was in a range wondering who dared come into their house without being invited. So huffing and grunting up the stairs, they all went to see if anyone was there. When Papa Bear came to his bed, and found the pillow pulled from its place. He roared out in a fury. Someone has been sleeping in my bed! Mama Bear looked at her bed and saw that it was full of lumps and rumples. She cried out, Someone has been sleeping in my bed! But when Baby Bear came to his little wee bed, the quilt was in place and the pillow was there, but on the pillow was Goldilocks's bare head, and she was fast asleep. Someone has been sleeping in my bed too, and here she is! Hey, wake up, you! Baby Bear's sharp, thrill voice woke up Goldilocks, and she found herself nose to nose with the angry little bear. She sat up quickly, and then she saw the other two bears tumbled herself out of the other side and flew across the room. She took one look at the open window and jumped out, landing in the soft grass below. Goldilocks looked up to make sure she had not just been imagining things and there were the three bears staring down at her. She got up and ran, but it seemed as if the woods were full of wild bears. So she ran faster and faster. She didn't look back once until she was well out of the woods and could see her own little house. When Goldilocks was safe at home, her mother gave her a scolding she did not soon forget, and she made up her mind never again to make herself quite so much at home as she did in the house of the three bears.
year. I hope you liked the video. Here are some previews of other videos. You know, sir, sometimes everyone asks me what kind of songs I listen to and what I hear. Well, I've been still pulling the big express across the island of Sodor and I was also singing when I'm hard at work. Thomas had teased me at Ulls Bridge when he said that Edward pulls chocolate cars. I slept late because I was very tired of pulling the big express to Napford and I stopped at Ulls Bridge to wait until the people get off. Well, why did that happen? You shall sleep better tonight. Thomas is still a really useful engine, and I know like teasing him. Of course, sir. Because I'm an express engine, I show my friend Allison Court how I'm really, really good at teasing Thomas. And I show Allison Court how an express engine pulls coaches to Napford all the way up to hack and back. This is a challenge I made up. Thank <laughs> you. 